One of the most common mistakes that students will make with a problem like this is they'll just go and say, oh, well, this is the same thing as a negative x plus one, which I mean, yes, it is. But if you're identifying the transformations, you do not want to use this because what students will do is they'll say, well, this is going to have a reflection. These, everything's inside. So we're going to have a horizontal reflection about the y axis. And then they'll say, we're gonna have horizontal transformations. And so therefore say, oh, remember, it's everything opposite. So they see the plus one, they say, okay, that's gonna be shifting the graph left one. And therefore they'll go ahead and take that graph and they'll say, all right, that is my graph. Um, that looks like it has a domain of from negative infinity all the way to a negative one. I am done. So what is the mistake that students made? Is that they did not write it in the proper transformation form. This is kind of a mistake for us teachers. I'm not gonna lie. Because a lot of time, or at least maybe educators um, or education textbooks, because a lot of times when we're learning about transformations, we learn transformations at different stages. It also depends on you know what course um, you're dealing with based on the functions and how we're going to describe them. A lot of times we like to keep the transformations simple. So therefore you can understand shifting left and right, shifting up and down, reflections, blah, blah, blah. But then once we start getting to these horizontal transformations, it becomes confusing because there's something really, really important that you need to know. And it's the most common mistake that I see with students when we deal with horizontal transformation. The student did this part right. You need to go ahead and rearrange it so therefore your x is going to be first. That is correct. The next important thing though is you cannot have any coefficient for your x because here is the truth about when you're dealing with horizontal transformations is that it only works when you have a coefficient of your variable is one. So what that means is I'm going to have to now factor out a negative one and therefore now it's going to leave me with an x minus a one. The student was correct. You had a reflection of your y-axis. However, it was not a horizontal shift to the left. It was actually a horizontal shift to the right. And a lot of students will make that mistake or a lot of students will still get this problem right on like a test or a quiz because they'll forget that this is the opposite and they see plus one and they move to the right one, which is incorrect thinking. However, if you like factor it out, if you didn't understand this, then you could still actually get the problem right. And the, what I'm basing all of this off of is the transformations for um, any function. A lot of times when we have even functions, we don't really focus in on this until we like start to get the trick. So it's really important to recognize here when I'm dealing with transformations and I want to understand what my C that only works when B is subtracted outside of the function. So it only works in this form. And a lot of times we won't talk about B with that C because it can be confusing. It's a little bit more of an advanced study. Let's go and take a look at what this graph looks like. So we have a reflection about the Y axis. That is correct. But it's actually going to be a shifting a right one. So therefore, my domain in this case is going to be from negative infinity to positive one. And my range in this case is going to be from zero to positive infinity. Now, this is a very common mistake because it didn't really look too hard to be able to get it factored out. Now, factoring out the negative one was pretty easy. But in the next video, I'll show you what happens when my B is going to be a fraction. That makes factoring it out, graphing, finding the domain range much harder. So that's coming up in the next video.